But you, got, you don't need to pretend to be someone you're not. You do that every day. At work, on the train, at home with your family. When you're here with me, I give you permission to do you. You've known Michaela for a long time, since drama school. How has she changed and did she make you audition for this part? How she changed? She's kind of changed and she hasn't changed, you know? Like, she's, I think she's kind of grown into herself in a way that um, you kind of hope for someone who's, who's gone from being whatever it is, 22, 32. To me, she's always been a very special, charismatic, intelligent, insightful, challenging, brave woman, you know? So it's great for that to be um, platformed and seen by the masses because I, th- I think she's an incredibly special human being. Um, and yeah, she did make me, au- <laughs> it's not even that she made me audition for the part. She didn't even think about me for the auditions, you know, like um, she, we, me, me and her were like chatting about the project in, in, in a way that friends chat about like what you're doing, you know, like I was talking about what I was doing. She was like talking about how she was writing this thing and I was going into production and blah, 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 blah. It never even came into her mind that I would be like, <laughs> right, or even, sometimes I, I think that she doesn't even know I'm an actor, you know, because we don't talk about acting. Um, but yeah, it was the casting director, Julie Harkin, who's like, who <laughs> I've got a lot to be grateful for, um, suggested it to Makeda, and she was kind of like, really? <laughs> and, and the casting director was like, yeah, please. Um, and yeah, and so yeah, I came into, I actually auditioned a couple of times. I mean, and Makeda have just got a very good kind of, with, We've got a kinship mentally, psychologically, and emotionally, you know? So, like, we've always had really productive conversations creatively. So it's, it, it, it worked out in the end. I've never really spoken to a brother who was, uh... <coughs> what, gay? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can see it, we're in Britain. No one's gonna throw me off a building. When you read the role, where did you connect with it? And then, like, why was it important to you? And what have you learned about speaking truth for, like, male victims of assault? I connected to him in terms of, like, he's a really imperfect black man in the same way that I am, I guess. Like, he's got no kind of, like, delusions of grandeur. He's kind of, like, just trying to live his life and do it with happiness and peace, which is kind of working for him in a bit in a very good way until like about 28 minutes into the fourth episode before that he's like happy as Larry really some of his responses aren't like expected aren't like the, the normal re- responses to trauma and like, that's something that I really relate to as well in terms of like traumas that I've been through so like I just felt I just found him incredibly real um and truthful and yeah so that was a great challenge for me especially like black male gay victims of course like i'd encourage people to speak out but like the issue is not about like people speaking out the issue is about how that truth is received and like that's what this that's where the scrutiny should be at when we watch television we watch films we read books we read articles magazines music whatever we're taught to think that the only people that are assaulted are women and the only people that commit those assaults are men and that doesn't make an allowance or have any respect for the gamut of experience and the gamut of, the gamut of different iterations through which that dynamic can be played out. At the time where the thing that's most needed is empathy and um, I can't, and yeah, someone that's got the apparatus to, 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 to act on that. In this gray area. Sit with me. When the assault happens, Kwame's like confidence, which is so much of his character, is really shaken very deeply. How did you sort of put that on the screen? Yeah, I kind of wanted to like make sure that there was a kind of difference in like the vivacity of the performance or like the um, size maybe of it um, before and after, you know, because like I feel like for him, it's a real turning point in him. And it's a lot about what he doesn't say and a lot about what he suppresses after that. So that was, a, that kind of informed my physicality, informed my kind of psychology. It was, a, it, was, it was about thinking about what he couldn't say or wanted to say, but couldn't say, you know? And that actually like gives you, a, as an actor, that gives you a real big obstacle to play against. You know, you can't play kind of trauma. You can't play like sadness or whatever, but you can play like a desire to 
want to have connection or desire to want to tell someone something or a desire to be better or a desire to cover up or whatever. But I think like, yeah, it's about what we can't say and what we don't say as humans that, um, that is really interesting. My grandma really liked your class this morning, the uh, aqua aerobics. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw you in, um, saw you in the window. <laughs> how much were you told or how much did you imagine about his backstory? Like about like where this confidence came from, what his life was like growing up, like how he came out. Like, did you think about any of that stuff? Me and Michaela like, spent a lot of time building that kind of backstory. Um, and some of it kind of makes it into the show. Like we hear a little bit about his dad coming from Ghana. Um, we hear about like previous relationships that he's had. For me, it's really important that I do all of that work imaginatively and collaboratively with, with, um, with Michaela in a way that hopefully allows it to inform the character by giving it depth and giving it body and allowing it and, and, and making sure that I'm not kind of like making stuff up on the spot that has no consistency. You know, for me, it's about having a, 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 a he, what we're seeing is a moment in a whole lifetime, you know, so it's important that we recognize where that, where that comes contextually for him. Do you think Kwame gets like closure at the end of the season? Like, do you think he can see where his life is going, like the end of the tunnel for him? I think closure is like a difficult word because like there's something definitive about that, isn't it? It kind of like gives the impression that like he's kind of moving on or he can leave like what's happened to him behind. And I don't think that's necessarily how anyone kind of like properly protest, processes trauma. And um, I think often it's so, well, at least from my own experience, it's something that you carry with you and kind of like morphs into different things um, and, and starts to mean different things to you. And it's not necessarily about eviscerating something. So that in terms of like where Kwame's at by the end of the series, he's made some decisions and he's definitely made some changes um, that kind of like give the uh, impression that he's moving towards a certain direction. What's happened to him in the show and previously before the show is so huge that like, I don't think you can say definitively he's not this kind of person. And I think that's okay. 